Hello. Today I'd like to talk about my lathe. I know this is probably a bit early in my YouTube career to be discussing my specific equipment. Most guys tend to do that later on after they've had a few people view their videos, but I thought I'd try it as a uh, good practice. Um, this is my main lathe in my shop. It's uh, built by Chin Hung in Taiwan. I have another lathe, a much larger old British lathe that I use for really big parts and roughing. It's pretty worn out, but I do probably over 95% of my machining on, on this lathe. This, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this lathe is made by Chin Hung. Uh, it's sold under different names. I've heard it sold under Ajax, Kingston. Um, this one is advanced, but that's just the local dealer's vanity name for it. Uh, from what I understand, they're a copy of the Mazak Mate, which was a lathe made in Japan in the 60s and 70s and probably the 80s. Um, there's several companies that make this copy, uh, but from what I understand, the best one is made by Chin Hung. I've uh, seen people talk about this lathe on Practical Machinist, and that's the consensus on that website, and I would have to agree. I bought this lathe brand new in 2005, so I've had it for 13 years, and I haven't had any trouble with it. It turns out, consistently turns out really good work it's very accurate. I've leveled it very carefully. I take good care of it. It's well oiled. It's kept clean, at least where it counts on the slideways. Sometimes the chip pan's a bit dirty. <clears throat> um, but it, it turns out very accurate work. Uh, it cuts cylinders, not tapers, when you want it to. I have a good set of readouts, mid toil readouts. Um, I got the diameter set. I've got measured to read the diameter in tenths of a thou. That might seem a little extreme, but I can often hit size to exact, right to the tenth with this lathe. Not always, but often I can. And uh, therefore I set my readouts to be that fine. <clears throat> There's uh, I've, I've taken the lathe apart over, over the years to clean it mostly and I'm always surprised pleasantly surprised when I take it apart to see the quality that went into it um, one of the things on it I noticed was <clears throat> and this seems like a minor detail but this is something that drove me crazy on my older much cheaper first lathe I bought is the bolts that hold the compound rest to the cross slide my old lathe the castings were very soft the bolt sat much lower and after about two years of using it, and I bought that lathe brand new too, and after about two years of using it, the bolt actually started to pull through the cast iron and there was a bulge of cast iron underneath. And it was so bad that I couldn't get the compound rest to sit flat on the cross slide and I had to take it off and machine the bottom. And then I made some rectangular washers that would have sat up here with a longer bolt. Um, when I took this one apart, I noticed that they'd actually pressed a hardened steel insert into the casting so the bolt itself doesn't rest against the cast iron. And after what, 13 years and probably thousands of times tightening and loosening that bolt, there's obviously no indication of where, where that bolt shoulder meets the, the uh, hardened insert. It's a minor detail, but it drove me absolutely crazy on my old lathe. And it's nice to see that they, you know, taken care of that. Um, another thing on this lathe that's a little bit unusual is that all the sliding surfaces are hardened. The bed is hardened, that's not unusual, that's every lathe pretty much has a hardened bed now. Um, <clears throat> the cross slide is hardened, that's a little less common. But what's very unusual is that the compound rest slide is hardened as well. You can see the dark marks from where they heated it up. Um, and it makes for very smooth action. The, the upper parts of the slides are not hardened and they're obviously hand scraped into a good bearing, but it makes the action just silky smooth and very resistant to wear. Um, this cross slide, I can turn it from one end to the other and there's absolutely no change in the force required to turn the handle. 
So they obviously ground the dovetails very parallel. Um, it's just all those little details in this lathe are uh, just make it a really nice lathe to use. And like I said, after 13 years of fairly steady use, it's showing no signs of wear. It's still turning out very accurate work. It's still nice to use. Nothing's come loose. Nothing's rattled apart. It's just really good. <clears throat> Another uh, feature on this lathe that I like, and I'll, I'll actually show it to you in a minute, is that the feed gearbox is not driven by end-train gears. It's actually driven by a timing belt. And all the um, speed and feed, uh, sorry, feed and threading selections are made with the four levers, five levers actually. Um, and it's really nice because you can thread metric and imperial and quite a number of both threads and quite a number of feeds and you don't have to change anything. My last lathe, I had to change end train gears constantly and it was a real pain. So it's a really nice feature on this lathe. Now, having said all these things about the lathe, uh, the, the good things about this lathe, there's really only two complaints I have about it. One is the paint. The paint seems to be terrible. The, um, I can just show you here how it's worn away. Um, the coolant I use just seems to be like paint stripper on this stuff. And yet I have another machine, a mill, that's a couple of years older that I bought new as well. I use the same coolant and you can see that none of the paint has come off. So I think the uh, I think the paint they use is must be pretty low quality. It's a minor complaint though. I don't really care about how my lathe looks. I'm much more interested in its performance. <coughs> Excuse me. The other uh, complaint is that it doesn't have a clutch. It's uh, it was a down here with the lever on the carriage, uh, uh, ran the motor forward, that shut the motor off, up, ran the motor in reverse, it was handy, you had forward and reverse control right on the carriage, and then a foot brake, which shut the motor off and applied a band brake, that was really good too, really good if you get into an emergency and you gotta stop it quick. And when I first bought this lathe, I was in an industrial building with a good uh, three phase power supply and it wasn't a problem to start this it's a seven and a half horsepower motor it wasn't a problem to start it direct online lights didn't go dim or anything but then I moved this into my garage and I bought a phase converter to run it and the power supply in this area is at the time was very poor every time I started this lathe me and about eight neighbors all our houses, the lights went dim every time I started it. I knew it wouldn't be very long and there'd be complaints. So I decided I was gonna to need to put a clutch on it. I went and looked online to see if anyone made a clutch. Uh, there was nothing you could find that would fit that well and they were extremely expensive, looking at five to $7,000 for a clutch. And I realized that I was gonna just have to make a clutch and I, quickly determined that I was going to have to make it a pneumatic clutch because there just wasn't any room for linkages around the headstock or through the bed. The lathe was never designed with that in mind and I realized that it would be much easier just to run tubes to carry the air. So what I'll do is I'm going to set the camera down, take the cover off and we can have a look at the clutch. <clears throat> This whole assembly here is a clutch that uh, I designed and built about eight years ago. Um, I got lucky. Um, I've designed and built a lot of things and most things don't work properly the first time. Um, but in this case, I got lucky and it worked exactly how I wanted it to right from day one. I had no issues with it. Um, what I'll do is I'll start the lathe and just sort of show you how the clutch works. So you can see here, this is the 
the, uh, essentially takes the place of the pulley. This was the original pulley here, and it had a, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but it had a tapered bore in it. Uh, the input shaft on this lathe is relatively short, about this long, and it's got a tapered bore for the pulley to go on. So I had to make a tapered shaft, shaft to go on there to support all the clutch with a taper in the end. And I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to see it or not, but uh, it's pretty dark in there. There's a nut in there, and the shaft that I made is hollow, and it supports the pulley, which runs on bearings. And it supports the cylinder and piston assembly, which are here. And then this is the pressure plate. And I designed it so that the pulley, the pressure plate, and this is the brake disc would rotate, but that the piston that actuates it wouldn't rotate, because I didn't want to have to use a rotating air connection. I thought that might be a weak point that could leak. So all this had to be mounted on bearings. And what I'll do is I'll put the camera here. focus in a bit. I'll just show you how it operates. You can see how the, you can see how the pressure plate advances into the pulley and essentially causes the friction material to grab onto the pulley when it turns the input shaft. I'll just cycle it a few times so you can see it move. So that shows the basic operation of it. I also included a brake, this brake disc, and a caliper, because I wasn't gonna be able to use the foot brake anymore, because every time you use that, it shuts the motor off, and I wanted to avoid shutting the motor off. Um, the brake disc, or sorry, the, the brake disc I made, just from a piece of mild steel, the brake caliper actually is from a Polaris quad. My father-in-law ordered a caliper for his quad and they sent him the wrong one, they wouldn't take it back, so he gave it to me. And I was originally gonna make some kind of an air over hydraulic system to, uh, you know, with brake fluid to make it work. It's fairly complicated and I decided, you know what, I'll just try it with air first. And it works fine, it's just air at about 90 pounds pressure. It's worked really good actually. So that's the clutch. Um, it, like I said, it's worked really well. I really like it. It's really nice having a lathe on your, clutch on your lathe, rather. One thing on this whole project that turned out to be uh, trouble, and I never anticipated it, was the control valves. I bought, I'll just show you the valve set up down here. I uh, bought a couple of valves, made the cam, extended the shaft from the carriage out, plumbed them, and they worked. But I bought them from a store that sells, uh, well, they're notorious for selling cheap garbage, and the valves lasted about a month. Um, I bought another set from them, got another month out of them, decided I had to do better. I tried making my own, it didn't work very well. And then I found these ones, which are, I believe are made in Germany found them online I ordered them and they've been working uh, for about six years with no problems whatsoever um, they don't leak they don't stick they just work really well and they were not that much more money than the real cheap ones so that worked out really well and uh, along with the clutch working out well it's been a really good system on this lathe um, it's piped over to a filter regulator um, so that I don't get dirt into the clutch or the brake cylinder and it also gets lubricated. And that's, you know, th this has been working for about eight years now and I've never had any trouble with it, so. Um, I don't know if anybody would ever wanna build a clutch like I did on one of these lathes, but if they ever had the desire to, it actually wasn't too bad, uh, it took me about a month of work in evenings, and uh, oh, probably about five or six hundred dollars worth of parts and material. 
and uh, I think it's been worth it. Anyways, that gives you a bit of an overview of my lathe and the, the clutch. I don't know if this is very informative or not, but um, I know I would have liked to have seen a video like this when I was contemplating putting a clutch on my lathe. But um, anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.